this one is the figure shows the molding boxes we are going to use for preparing a mold and in this molding box there are the different varieties are available as shown in the figures. This one is a snap flask which consists of both top and bottom flasks dif differently. And this one is a bo box flask where one end is we can fix it with the help of some rivets and other screws. Next one is a slick. It is a small double ended tool having a flat at one end and a spoon at the other end. It is used for repairing and finishing of uh, small surfaces of the mold. So, then this one shows in the corresponding figures. Next one is a strike of bar. It is made of wood to level the surface of the rammed surface. Sprue pin. It is a tapered peg and this one is bellows and mallet and the sprue pin. The bellows is used in order to uh, blow a small grain, small sand particles over the surface of the finished, pro, finished um, mold cavity and other one. The sprue pin, it is a rounded bar which is used for a production of this mold cavities. The gaggers, the gaggers can create, uh, the gaggers is a just like uh, the shape as shown in the figure. And this one is also the clamps, we are one of the instrument used for production of the molds. The brush is used for cleaning of the mold cavity after preparing of the complete mold. When the pattern is removed, some, some molding sand will be withdrawn. So, in that case, we want to clean, clean it. So, we will use the brush. The smoother, the smoother is a softening plate which is used for smoothening the top surface of the mold uh, patterns. Next one is riddle. Riddle is used just like a, a sheave. It is also named as a sheave which is used for removing any unwanted impurities present in the sand. Next one is vent rod. It is used to make series of small holes to permit gases to escape. So, this vent rod is as shown in the figure. This is a vent rod which can after preparing a complete mold, mold cavity besides and uh, in around the surface of the mold cavity we will place some holes with the help of vent rod. Next draw spike. The draw spike is a pointed steel rod with a loop at one end it is used to wrap and draw patterns from the sand. Next one is wrapping plate. A wrapping plate or lifting plate is as shown in the figure which is used to facilitate wrapping and lifting the pattern from the mold. Next one is gate knife. This is used for cutting gates before the mold actually prepared, before pouring the molten metal. Gaggers. These are also called lifters. These are iron rods bent at one end or both ends. These are used for reinforcement of the sand. Next one is clamps. These are used for holding together the cope and a drag of the completed mold to prevent the cope from floating or rising when the metal is introduced into the mold. The cleaners and the sleekers are also the one of the um, tools used in the preparation of the molds for cleaning and other removing of the small sand in the mold cavity. This one is a, this figure shows the trowel which is used for finishing of the prepared mold. Next one is molding board and the wrapper. The molding board is a flat board which is used for keeping the flasks over that molding board. The water sprinkler is used for pouring of the water, so adding of some water content to the molding sand. Now, this one is a spirit level. The spirit level is in the figure is used by the molder to ensure that his bed of the sand molding box or molding machine table is horizontal. Next one is what is the need of the cores? The cores provided the means of producing hollow castings. The next one is external and undercut features. Some intricate shapes are also developed with the help of providing cores such as drainage, drainage fittings, hollow pipes, uh, hollow shafts, etc. There are the different types of cores we are going to use for a production of the other 
components. The first one is the condition of the material we will consider. Depending upon the condition of material, they are classified as a green sand cores and dry sand cores. In the green sand cores, the sand we are using, it is a natural available sand and we will mix with water and we will form the cores. And in the dry sand cores, after preparing the core, we will add that is we will heat it to temper some temperatures like 200 to 300 degrees centigrade. So, that is named as a dry sand cores. Next, depending upon the native of the material, the that means some so for a production of a good quality cores, we must add some bonding materials such as resin bonded cores, oil bonded cores, sodium silicate cores, and shell cores. Next, thirdly, the process employed for manufacturing of the cores are CO2 process, fluid or collapsible process, hot box process, and cold set process. So, this one is the, the course position of the course. The first figure explains the balanced core and the second one is hanging and cover core. So, this balanced core which will be utilized for production of components and then the core will be placed between the cope and drag. Whereas, in the case of hogging and cover core, the core will be placed only either in the uh, cope or either in the drag. Next, for preparation of the mold, there are the different molding machines are also available. So, hand operated molding machines and power operated molding machines, jolting machine. So, the first one is the jolts, jolt means in this jolting method, the flask is filled, first filled with molding sand and then the table supporting the flask is mechanically raised and dropped in succession. Due to the sudden change in inertia at the end of each fall, the sand get packed. This figure explains the complete details of a jolting machine. So, in this case of jolting, the flask is placed here. This is the, the first one is table, the second one is pattern, this one, this, this one is a pattern and the third one is flask and this one is a plunger we are going to use, this one is nose and uh, this one is a channel, so grinding gutter, all this one. So, this one is operated with the help of springs that placed at the bottom. So, in the first case, the figure supplies the principle of jolting machine. The table with the platen is filled with molding sand and the sand and it is raised to a height of 30 to 80 mm and then it is be uh, lowered. So, in such a case for raising and lowering, the sand will be get packed and corresponding pattern will be developed. Now, let us go to the next machine that is a squeezing machine. In this squeezing method, molding sand in the flask is squeezed between the machine table and the overhead squeeze board. So, the pneumatically or hydraulically until the mold attain the desired density, these are the two types of squeezing machines, top squeezer and bottom squeezer. This one is a top squeezer we have to see. In the case of top squeezer, this is the pattern, the figure shows this is the pattern, this is the mold, this one is a mold board and this one is a pattern and this one is a flask and the sand frame and the table lift and the squeeze bed. So, initially the pattern is placed and we are pouring some sand over that pattern and correspondingly the table will lift to some height and, and successfully it will drop down. To, towards the flask and the corresponding with the sand will be packed around the surface of the pattern. So, this is the one of the best method for squeezing. Next one is a sand slinger. In the slinging operation, the consolidation and ramming is obtained by the impact of sand, which falls at a very high velocity. The overhead impeller head consists of the consists of the having in which the blade rotates very high speed. The sand is delivered to the impeller through the opening by means of conveyor buckets. So, this is the figure shows the sand slinger. So, in the case of sand slinger, this one is the housing, this one is the blade which rotates, this one is the opening and this one is the outlet. So, initially through the opening some sand is entered into the casing and it will be projected over the blade surface. Whenever the blade will rotate at high speed and the corresponding 
high speed to the apply to the sand and it will be uh, dropped over the surface of the core which is placed at the bottom and the corresponding pattern will be uh, filled with mold mom, sand and the mold cavity will be developed. The next one is special casting processes. All metals can be cast in sand molds and there is no limitation as compared to size of castings. However, sand molds are single purpose molds. So, there are the different advantages of using special casting processes over conventional sand casting. Special casting process save labor, time and expenses. More number of castings can be produced with single permanent metal mold. Greater dimensional accuracy is also possible by applying this uh, casting methods. It will avoid the further machining of the castings. The class in depending upon the applications and other varied, these are classified as first one is metal mold casting. In the metal mold casting, there are again three categories. First one is permanent mold casting, second one is die casting. In the die casting, there are the two types cold chamber and hot chamber and the third one is a slush casting. Whereas, for the non-metallic molds, first one is centrifugal casting that means in the above one we are using some metal as a pouring material whereas in this case we are using non-metals that as a plastics and other cases we will use this type of methods. This in the case of non-metallic mold castings, centrifugal casting, investment, CO2 molding and shell molding. Next, uh, the last one is continuous casting. The permanent mold casting or gravity die casting. So, in the case of permanent mold or gravity die casting method, it is done with the help of permanent molds made with cast iron steel. This mold can be reused many times and thus are discarded in the process molten metal is paired into the mold. There are the advantages of using this one, the carburetor applications, hydraulic brake cylinders, connecting rods and pistons, oil pump bodies. There are some industrial applications or manufacturing of CA pipes, sewage pipes. The process can make liners for IC engines, rings and other annular components. The next one is die casting. It utilizes the permanent metallic mold for rapid production of accurately dimensioned parts. The die casting is originally applic apply, uh, used in the production and in the casting of low melting point metals such as the tin, lead, magnesium and zinc. There are the different metal injection mechanisms are also applied in this case. The first one is hot chamber die casting, gooseneck type and submerged plunger type. The second one is cold chamber die casting and the third one is vacuum die casting hot chamber die casting. In this type of hot chamber die casting, the melting unit constitutes an integral part of the process. Gooseneck or air injection type. This machine is provided with suitable mechanism to raise and lower the gooseneck. As the figure explains, this is the submerged plunger type die casting machine. So, in this case, this figure, the first initially this is the gooseneck type this is the gooseneck type injector. So, initially the gooseneck type injector is pressure is connected to the piston cylinder assembly as shown in the figure. So, whenever the pressure from the outside pressure cylinder from the outside it is connected and the corresponding plunger will be moved the gooseneck the metal will becomes into the gooseneck type gooseneck type and the corresponding gooseneck type injector is connected to the die cavity as shown in the figure. Whenever it is projected into the die cavity, the metal will be pro pressed between these two dies and the corresponding blocks will be produced. So, this is the one of the important method and then from the bottom we are forcing some compressed air. The next one is pneumatic die casting. In the case of pneumatic die casting, this is also one of the important one where we are using the gooseneck and the gooseneck will drops downwards and collecting molten metal from this one 
and from and from the furnace from molten metal and from the bottom it is also named as a pot molten pot where we will collect the molten metal from the pot and the corresponding air pressure will be applied from the top and due to this air pressure the molten metal will be projected into into the die cavity and the corresponding mobile die and fixed die movements the corresponding product will be developed the next one is cold chamber die casting in this melting unit is not the integral part of the cold chamber die casting machine molten is tough and paired into the die casting machine with the help of a ladle it consists of pressure or cold chamber cylind cylindrical shape fitted with piston or ram the figure explains the cold chamber die casting so initially this one is the molten metal and this one is like this one is a die cavity and this one is ejector and this these two are the mobile die and the stationary die whenever the metal is poured in this space the piston will be moving in this direction and it will projected the molten metal into the die cavity space and the ejector from the ejector it will the finished product we will obtain and the centrifugal castings so this centrifugal casting is purely meant for non metallic type of materials it is normally carried out in permanent mold which is rotated during the solidification process it will produce the centrifugal uh, accelerations due to the centrifugal accelerations it the corresponding speed of rotation is maintained high centrifugal casting methods are of three types true centrifugal casting semi centrifugal casting and centrifuge casting there are some advantages considered for the centrifugal casting so in this case the absence of runner riser and cores casting produced by this method are sand with bent structure it is more economical the percentage of rejection is very low the next one is investment casting it is also named as last wax process it uses a pattern of an expandable material such as wax or polystyrene mm -hmm. the mold is called the investment is prepared by surrounding the pattern with a refractory slurry that can be set at room temperature the next one is shell molding this process entails making molds and cores as relatively thin shells from the mixture of fine sand and thermosetting resins so in the case of shell molding we are using the artificial sands which will be which the constituents will be mixed in the proper proportions there are the during the manufacturing of the casting casted products by using the corresponding molds and patterns the sum of the defects will be observed the first one is shift next one first one is shift the shift will be positive mainly appears whenever the cope and drag will distorted the second one is warped castings the third one is swell the swell is mainly possible due to the for not doing perfect ramming the fins and blow holes are also developed due to the in continuity of the metal flow and the gas holes and hot tears are the whatever the gas entrapped in the molten metal itself these are the some of the defects observed in the manufacturing of uh, our production of castings students so far we have covered different types of patterns such as solid segmental gated skeleton etc and various materials used for them like wood cast iron aluminum also we also studied different molding methods hope you understood the lesson well dear students in this session we are going to discuss forging the main objective of this topic is knowing the complete details about forging and tools used forging is the process of deforming the metal into different shapes by heating up to plastic state and then applying pressure the process is mainly used for production of heavy parts on large scale in this chapter we are discussing about hand forging machine 
machine forging and the tools used in forging. There are different types of forgings generally that developed in different uh, workshops. They are hand forging, drop forging, machine forging, upset forging. First one is hand forging. That means this hand forging carried purely with hand tools that is depends upon skill of the operator. So, it is also named as a smithy forging. The second one drop forging. Forging is either impact or by applying some pressure is possible. So, that happens in the case of drop forging. Next one machine forging. This is done under forge hammer or presses. Last one is upset forging. In this type of uh, forging, the press type machine which spreads and gathers the metal we are using for, for different forging operations. The first one is hand forging. It is a process of heating metal to plastic state in an open fire and then shaping it with a hand hammer. It is done by a blacksmith. It is purely meant for small jobs. So, in the case of uh, hand forging, it is uh, for repairing and other works only it is specified. For performance of various operations, there are the different types of tools used in the forging. The far they, are, they are classified depending upon the uses. The first one is supporting, which supports the workpiece during the working process. The second one is striking tools, that means by applying pressure or by applying blows, the striking tools are used. The third one is finishing and shaping tools. After the exact forging operation is completed, for removing any small amounts, we will go for the finishing and shaping tools. The first one is supporting tools. In the supporting tool, the important one is anvil and the purpose of the anvil is to support the work while hammering. Any big shapes makes it useful for bending round rods into different diameters. So, in the case of anvil, there are the two types of holes are there. One is a square hole and the other one is a round hole. So, these two holes are used for conversion of shape changes from round to square or square to round after heating the bar at red hot conditions and placing the bar in that circular hole uh, by applying pressure with the help of hammer, it is possible to change the shape of the workpiece. So, this uh, square hole is also named as hartic hole and this round hole is also named as a pritchell hole. The figure shows the anvil, the exact that is the, the this is named as a, the anvil which is made up of some casted part. It is either it is placed in the wooden part or it is a on the concrete block. So, generally it is having the different shapes, the base having different shapes in order to accommodate uh, the heavy blows. So, there are the different parts, the first one is base, the second one is horn, third one is chipping block, fourth one is face, and the fifth one is heel, sixth one hardic hole and seventh one is pritchell hole. So, students in this case of anvil, there is an important factor is one, the top of the surface of the anvil is made hardened up to 5 to 6 mm is made hardened in order to withstand heavy blows caused by the hammers. So, that is the important factor that manufacture in the case of a anvil. So, the next one is a swage block. So, it is, it is made up of cast steel or casting. It is of having round square and rectangular slots. So, broadly the squares block consists of different types of holes having different uh, uh, sizes or shapes. The sizes may be a circular shape or um, rectangular shape or hexagonal shape. So, generally the squares block is used for conversion of shape changes from round to square, from round to hexagonal. So, for that purpose we are using this one. So, in this case, this is used as a support in punching holes and forming different shapes. So, the figure shows uh, the swage block which consists of the different holes. The bottom layer, it is a circular hole It is and the top layer, it is in the around the periphery, it is just a rectangular holes and having different grooves. So, all these have well, more helpful in order to change the shape of a particular heated object during the forging operation. So, in the students, this is also one of the type of uh, anvil which is we are going to use uh, that is double horn anvil. So, this is an exceptional one and it is purely meant for different uh, applications just like uh, for, uh, uh, for conversion of angle uh, that is bending and other pure bending 
under angular bending or 90 degrees bending. So, in those case we will go for this double horn anvil. The next one is supporting after the supporting that holding tools. In the holding tools we are all aware about the vice. It is uh, in the case of vice it is heavy duty vice fixed to one end to do a leg or set to a concrete base. It has mainly used for light work and bending work. So, generally in the case of leg vice the one end is fixed and that is purely operated on the leg pressure and the amount of pressure applied is up to 30 to 35 kgf. So, we are applying with the help of legs. So, the next one is hammers. There are the two types of hammers used in hand forging. The first one is a hand hammer and the second one is a sledge hammer. So, these two are categorized depending upon the work. The first one is used for a smaller work and the second one is used for the heavier work. The hand hammer these are used for small works they are ball pin, cross pin and stride pin. So, these are the three types of ball pin, cross pin and stride pin. In the sledge hammer it is used by Smith's helper. The weight of the weight varies from 4 to 15 kgs. These are used for heavy works. These are specified by their weight and shape. The figure shows the hand hammers. The hand hammer consists of this one is the rounded portions and the flat faced one. So, the round portion is used for the other round works and this one is used for bending works. These are the different types of hand hammers available that is a flat faced round faced. And the next figure goes to sledge hammer which is having heavy which is mainly used for heavy work. The sledge hammers is a double faced one and the cross pin the cross pin one. So, this cross pin one is used for, uh, for bending and other applications. So, generally the sledge hammers are specified with the help of uh, with the help of the weight that is it is expressed in terms of so many cages. The next one is holding tools. The first important holding tool is tongs. Tongs, tongs is the blacksmith's one of the important tool to hold the object while doing forging operation. That means for the operator it is uh, difficult to handle the heated object. So, in that condition, so different types of uh, tongs are comes into picture. The first one is closed mouth tong, the second one is open mouth tong, third one is round hollow tong, square hollow tong, fifth one is fifth and last one is pickup tong, closed mouth tong. So, this closed mouth tong is mainly helpful in holding of uh, thin sections. Open mouth tongue it is used for holding of heavy sections. Round hollow tongue it is used for uh, holding round hexagonal shapes. Square hollow tongue the square and hexagonal works we are going to use. Pick up tongue just it is a pick and place type objects uh, we are using this pick up tongue for picking up the object from the furnace and placing it in the furnace we are using this type of uh, tongs. Further clarification contact the additional secretary state board of technical education and training 7th floor BRKR Bhavan Tank Bund Road Hyderabad 500 Zero six three, fax zero four zero three two two zero five four six.